Let us turn this image into a glowing winter landscape scene using a little bit of Lightroom and maybe some Photoshop as well. As always, if you want to follow along, you can do that by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump right into it. So this is our scene opened up in Lightroom and the very first thing we want to do is since we are working with a very contrast rich scene with some very bright highlights and some deep dark shadows, we want to merge an HDR file. Down here you can already see the HDR sequence which we are going to use. So make sure to select all five images down here, right click, then choose photo merge and choose HDR. I am not going to change anything here, just maybe make sure to check auto align, but we can safely ignore everything else and let's hit the merge button. Okay, so this is our HDR. It doesn't look much different than before, but we can do a lot more thing with such a file. And of course, the very first thing we want to do with the editing are the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel and we can start things by changing the profile. Instead of Adobe Color, I want to go with Adobe Standard. The reason here is it makes the image just a little more neutral with less contrast. So I just have a little more control over that myself. Now I want to make the shot a lot brighter first. So I'm going to bring up the exposure until I get some details in those very dark areas of the image, just like that. Then I'm also going to bring down the highlights all the way down. Since we're working with an HDR file, we can safely do this. And bringing down the highlights will reveal all these nice details in the sky, which we need in order to create this glowing landscape scene. I also want to bring up the shadows just to get a little more detail out of these darker areas. And I want to slightly raise the blacks as well. Raising the blacks and the shadows like this does also help with creating this dreamy soft look since we are effectively reducing the image's contrast and that just works well together with that glowing effect. Speaking of contrast, I want to add a little bit of overall contrast just to also introduce some punch to this image. And at this point, I think it's time to work on the white balance. I do like the colors. However, I want this shot to feel a little bit warmer. So let's use the temperature slider and bring it up. I'm going to introduce quite a bit of temperature here because I want the sky to be almost this golden like color. And then I'm not going to touch the tint because I think those tones do look quite good. Next, I want this image to have some very sharp, small details. So that's the reason for me to bring up the texture a notch. I'm also going to introduce a little bit of clarity and now what I really love doing to create this glowing effect is to bring down the dehaze. You can see it very clearly when looking at the edge of this building, for example, how negative dehaze adds some very, very nice glow on top of it. So let's bring it down quite a bit. I love how this looks. And then I also want to bring up the vibrance. So we can safely raise it since we almost have no colors in here due to that snow and those gray dark clouds. Uh, so I'm going to bring it up like that. And I think we already have our base image edited. We can take a look at before and you can see a clear difference. The image looks much warmer. It's also much brighter. And of course we have this glow already added on top using the negative dehaze. So at this point, let's apply a little bit of masking. I want to start by making the sky just a little bit darker. I'm using a color range mask and I want to make the sky darker, not the clouds. So I'm going to click right in here. And this unfortunately will also select some clouds. I'm going to make use of the refine slider and just slightly bring it down. And since I only want to affect the top part of the sky, I'm going to click on those two dots choose intersect mask width and choose linear gradient. With that linear gradient, I'm just going to cover the top part of the sky, just the area which I want to change. And here, let's try bringing down the exposure. Just to add a little more contrast here. 
And now let's also bring down the blacks for even more contrast in the very top part of the sky. That looks great. Next up, I think that brush in the foreground could use a little more detail. I'm going to use a radial gradient roughly covering this thing. And in here, I want to bring up the shadows very gently. And I also want to add a little bit of clarity. Okay, that looks great. I further want to work on the sky. I'm going to choose a sky selection mask. And I guess this sky selection mask is very, very unprecise, as you can see, as it's overlapping the landscape. I want to try to make it more precise by using that intersect trick I'm often using. So let's go hit those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose select sky. This does make the sky mask a little more precise, but still not perfect. But that's not a big deal. Let's just say subtract and use a radial gradient. Now with this radial gradient, I am covering pretty much the whole width of the image. And I do think that's quite good like this. What I want to do with this selection, I want to make the sky just a little bit warmer by further bringing up the temperature slider. And we could also bring up the saturation so the colors are a little more visible in here. And maybe we could even use some clarity just a little bit to add some punch to these clouds. Okay, that looks good. I do want to work a little more on this glowing effect. I'm going to use a few radial gradients. So let's first create one like this. And I'm making it really, really small, just covering the brightest spot in the sky like this. And I'm making sure this glowing spot is overlapping that building here. This is because I want to create some kind of light spill effect. So the light from the bright area is kind of overlapping this dark roof of the building. So with this radial gradient, what I'm doing is I'm bringing up the blacks. And you can already see what I mean with light spill effect. So let's raise the blacks quite a bit. We can also introduce some more temperature in this particular area, making it appear to be some kind of golden glow. And of course, we can again use some negative dehaze to further improve this glowing effect. That looks awesome. Let's repeat this. I'm going to use another radial gradient. This time I'm covering a bigger area in the sky like this. Again, I'm making sure to overlap that building right here. And again, let's bring up the blacks. Let's bring up the temperature once more. And let's drop the dehaze. All right, that looks great. Now I think we're almost done with the masking. I do want to apply one linear gradient for the very top part like that. And I want to bring down the blacks a little more, making the top part darker. Then let's also add a linear gradient for the foreground and reduce the whites. The reason for me to reduce the whites here is I want to make this bottom part darker, but I don't want to drop the blacks, the shadows or the exposure because I don't want to risk underexposure. So therefore I'm going to drop the whites, which will make the area darker without introducing underexposure. And here we have the image after just a bit of masking. So we went from this to this. Beautiful. So at this point, let's do some color grading. What I want to do first is I want to head into the color mixer. I want to head into the saturation tab and I want to bring up the orange saturation a little bit as well as the yellow saturation. And I think we can even introduce some more blue tones just like this. I don't want to overdo it in the color mixer. I instead want to head into the color grading tab itself for the split toning. And here we want to use the highlights. So I'm going to set up the hue first somewhere right here in the yellow range. And let's bring up the saturation here. Then we can also head into the midtones and add a little bit of color contrast by using a cold hue for the midtones, slightly bumping up the saturation here, just like this. And I'm quite happy with this subtle split toning effect. We can do more color grading in the calibration tab. And I want to start with the blue primary hue, just bringing down the hue a bit and raising the saturation. 
I do think I want to go really crazy here. I also want to bring up the green saturation. Let's see if we can bring down the hue here. And as always, I'm just playing around with these sliders until I get something that looks nice. So I also want to bring up the red saturation, just like this. Okay, let's adjust the others a bit. Okay. So at this point, we can do the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and increase the amount of sharpening. All right. And I think that's it for the Lightroom adjustments. Let's compare to before. You can see the glowing effect is really, really nice on this image with the bright light coming from the sky. I'm also quite happy with the colors. However, we do need to clean up this image and I think I might even add a little more glow in Photoshop. That's something I can unfortunately not do in Lightroom. So right click the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Let's first clean up the image. I'm going to hit Ctrl J to duplicate that layer to have a backup. First, I think the image is kind of skewed. I want to create a guideline just to be safe here. And you can see how this part of the hill is slightly lower than the other side. I want to kind of fix that. I'm going to hit Ctrl T and with the transformation panel open, I'm going to right click in the image and choose warp. So with the warp tool active, I'm going to click right in the image and just slightly drag it up to kind of balance the image a little more. Okay, that should be enough. Let's get rid of that guideline and it does look better. Perfect. So let's start the cleaning process. I want to start with the spot healing brush and let's zoom in. I want to get rid of a few things here. Let's clean up the field and foreground from any dark patches like these. You see spot healing brush is perfect for jobs like this. Okay, but that looks good, I guess. I think we're almost done. I still want to add a little more glow. So let me create a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, and then let's grab the brush by pressing B, bring down the brush opacity. This is very important to make this glow effect as subtle and not too overwhelming. And we're going and we're going to pick up a color tone from right here in the bright part of the sky. We could make it a little more vibrant changing the color a little more. Okay. And now what I'm doing with a very, very soft brush, I'm going to just paint in once or twice to create this very cool glow effect on top. Let's see, we could also add it a little bit on the other side. It doesn't make sense in a physical way, but I don't care about that. All right, that looks awesome. So another thing I want to do is I want to dodge the foreground a little bit. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay and to select the highlights of the foreground, I'm going to hit Control Alt 2. And you can see this selection going on right now. With the selection active, I'm going to click the layer mask icon and this will create a very basic luminosity mask for us. And with this layer, what we want to do is to grab the brush once more set the foreground color to white because we want to dodge things. And let's bring the opacity of the brush up very, very slightly. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going to paint over a few areas in the foreground, just making it slightly brighter. This in fact might be a little bit too much. So let me bring down the opacity here. Want to keep it subtle, but this is looking very, very good. And I guess that's it for editing this dreamy landscape image. So I hope this tutorial was interesting and helpful, although it was not completely done in Lightroom. Let me know if you have any questions about the editing or want to add anything. So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.